is it. Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited for you to attend this webinar, which is Supercharge Your Networking. Discover your money-making message and turn it into a pitch that sells you. <laughs> so, you know, when you know your message, when you have a pitch, when people ask you, what is your book about? The answer you should be getting after you pitch your book is, oh my God, I have to read it. Where can I get it? Where can I get it? Or when people say, what do you do for a living? Or what do you speak about? Are you getting the answer? We absolutely have to have you speak for a company. Or I have to attend your webinar. Or I, I need your coaching. Oh my God, that's exactly what I need. So I'm going to show you today, if you're not getting that reaction, if you are wanting to apply for a TED Talk, if you want to get your book published and get paid by a publisher, if you want to get big speaking gigs, there's one thing that you need for all of that to happen. And that is that you need a message. And I'm so excited today because today I'm going to give you the message of you formula. I'm going to give you coaching and you're going to walk away knowing what your message is and how to sell you and start making money. En enough of this working for free people. So this is normal for everybody. I'm sure you have all been to these Zoom meetings and you go around and you go, well, everybody say a little bit about what you do, right? And you get like one minute. Well, after today, the way you do it, you're gonna see in the chat, how do I get in touch with you? Because there's a way to say what you do when you're introducing yourself that you should not waste that one minute. That one minute can turn into clients, customers, people who want to buy what you are offering. Matter of fact, I was on a plane back <laughs> when I was on a plane uh, without a mask. And the stranger next to me asked me, what do I do for a living? I said, I was a speaker. What do you speak about? And the way I answered that question, and I'm not exaggerating here, people, I netted over, wait for it, $160,000 worth of business, of speaking business. She hired me on the spot from a one minute pitch. That's how powerful the information I'm giving you today is. It is a game changer. Because no matter where you are, when a stranger just, you know, rolls over and says like, hey, that was great. What's your name? And what do you do for a living? You're going to have a way to tell them. <laughs> Is anybody smiling at that? I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> Forget about doing comedy here without, without sound on. So how do you answer this question? It is an opportunity to sell stuff. Here's the first mistake people make. What do you do for a living? You talk about yourself and your accomplishments. Now, there's a way to talk about your accomplishments and to do this, but I have to tell you, the reason people hire you is, is not because you're some big VIP or the acronyms after your name, just because you're a CEO or CFO doesn't make you a BFD. What makes you a BFD is your message and how you present it. And oh my God, has this happened to you? This, this makes me laugh. I'm talking to someone, I say, oh, tell me a little bit about what you do. Oh, go to my website. What do you mean go to your website? I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> I just, oh, this is great. You ask someone what they do and you know they've been coached because they go into their memorized pitch 
And it's like, I'm a robo consultant and this is the pitch I do. You, you can't recite your memorized pitch. Your pitch is going to be your one minute message of you pitch depends on who you're talking to. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then, oh, these people um, are scientists, are IT people. They have a lot of data about what they do, a lot of information, and they throw it right at you. And you just, it's so boring. You just wanna poke your eyes out with a pencil. Today, you will learn how to discover your money-making message using the message of you formula, because we are going to take a deep dive into your life and identify personal stories that support your message and just grab people by the heart and that you can tell in two sentences and how to monetize your message by turning it into a webinar consulting business or a one minute sizzle reel. And no matter what your occupation or how down you are on yourself, I wanna show you how to establish yourself as an expert. Because your one minute pitch can turn into a consulting business, a webinar, a book, a speech, even a TED talk. Matter of fact, when you apply for a TED talk, they ask for a one minute pitch. They did a call out for uh, people to submit to them their pitches. Over 10,000 people submitted a pitch and only six got in. Guess who was one of them? Yes, me. And I'm showing you the same exact formula that I used to score that TED Talk that got me so many more gigs and upped my salary and it got me a fantastic video. So this is one of my students. We worked on her pitch and then we turned it into a webinar called Soul Mating. She did it twice, only twice so far, and she's already made $900 from selling her coaching services from doing that webinar. So, you know, I know a lot of us get so excited. I have a great idea for a book and then it just falls apart. It's because you haven't worked on the pitch, the message, just like a house. A, your message is your foundation and without it, your project is just going to crumble. So you might be asking yourself, well, who the hell are you, Judy Carter? Like, what have you done? Well, let me tell you, I started my life as my, my, my life. <laughs> I started my career as a stand-up comic. Do you recognize this person? Well, that's a very much younger me, and that's a very much younger and very alive prince. So I was working as a stand-up comic, and I was working sometimes 46 weeks of the year, and I just wanted to have a different kind of a career. I wanted to be a writer, and I wrote this book, Stand Up Comedy, the book which was rejected from 59 agents until I got a compelling pitch. This was the pitch. Do people say to you, you're so funny, you should be a comedian, but you don't know how? Well, that not only got me a deal with Random House, but got me the attention of someone else. Maybe you recognize her, Oprah Winfrey. She has me on her show. And wow, that blew up my life, right? Um, all of a sudden, everybody wants to study with me. These are some of my students, Seth Rogen, Maz Brani. And then um, next thing you know, I got more book deals because once you get your foot in the deal, in, in the door, all sorts of things can happen. I wrote, this is my new book, the, the, first of all, the Comedy Bible, and then the New Testament, the New Comedy Bible, which has been translated in Chinese. Here's the Russian version. And then the craziest thing started happening is I started to get offers from corporations, from banks, from FedEx, from pharmaceutical companies, insurance companies on how they can use humor to alleviate stress. Oh my God. So many of my comedy friends said, Judy, how do I have this career? Because, you know, corporate gigs pay about, um, I don't know, a hundred times more than comedy clubs. So I wrote this book, The Message of You. 
I have a special gift for all of you who are here. I so appreciate you being here. I created the Message of You University. Uh, it is an online university. It teaches you how to find your message, how to market it, how to write your speech, and even a comedy module in it. This was a $770 value. But if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you a year's full access to the Message of You videos free. And I'm sure you can afford that. I'm also going to give you the message of you formula. This is going to guide you on a five-step process that results in a compelling pitch for you to get a TED talk or sell yourself as a speaker, or create a webinar, or turn it into a one-minute sizzle reel. And I'm going to give you a list of speaker bureaus. This is a list of agents who book speakers. So please stay to the end. Here we go. I'm going to uh, reveal my formula now and we're going to work with it. How do you answer this question? What do you do for a living? Well, what is the what problems does your audience have that you are qualified to solve? I had an assistant and um, rather than going, I'm an assistant. I'm a virtual assistant or I'm an admin. It's like, no, you're not. You're tamer of the chaos. It's like, how do we rephrase what we do so that we solve a problem? All right, so here's the formula. The first thing you say is this, you know how. So if I say, what do you do for a living? Well, you know how, and you state the problem your audience is having, and you avoid these three words, I, me, or my. And that's why this pitch is different for everyone you pitch it to, all right? Number two, after you state their problem, and I'm going to show you some examples of this, you give some credentials. Now, some people, um, have had um, pro like said, well, you know how people are suicidal and they're really having a hard time and the suicide rate is going up and they just feel their life is worthless. Well, and then I go, what is was your experience? Well, due to my experiences as a stand up comic, <laughs> you can't do that. Just, well, I was suicidal. Yes, but what your message has to be based on what other people have paid you to do. But if you get a speaking gig, you can put that story in your speech as your heart story. It's not a part of your message. You have to have had professional experience to, solve, to show that you can solve problems. Then you go as well as, and then you reveal your mess to success story with the problem. I show how to, and you give the results. And I do this, and how are you gonna do this? I'm gonna show you a five-step program. Here are the five steps. I'm going to do this through, in, through my book. It's, I'm gonna do this through an interactive um, webinar. How are you going to get these results? So, Let's just, this is a lot to give you. So we're going to start with just number one and number four. You know how, what is the problem your audience has and what are the results that you give? And later on, I'm going to show you how this five-step formula got me $160,000 worth of speaking engagements and how I pitched it on a plane. Um, but I'm going to do that a little later because first I want to just show you number one and number four. We call this your core promise. So you know how, what is the core promise your audience has and what are you going to teach them? It's very simple. Martin Jacobs is a client of mine. Um, he's a, a expert in customer centricity. He came to me because he wrote an article and Forbes wouldn't have it in, rejected it. It's called, 
develop an understanding of what customer centricity is. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Do you really care about developing and understanding what customer centricity is? No. How many of you walk around going, God, my day would be complete if I just knew what customer centricity was? No. Nobody knows what it is. Who cares? Nobody gives a shit. So what did I change it to? This. What do we all care about? Surviving the COVID economy. Surviving the COVID comedy economy is something on everybody's mind. Okay, it's happening now. They are anticipating a recession, a depression. Companies have gone bankrupt. 50% of companies have gone bankrupt. This is a problem, right? Do I have your attention? Yes, I do. How can I survive? Well, what is his solution? Why you should fire 90% of your clients right now. What? That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make any sense. Why should I fire? If, shouldn't I be going after every single one of them? And that's, and that's his message. No. So guess what happens? I took his article. I rewrote it. I rewrote it with his message and um, he ended up with, oh, it's not here, the picture of it, but he ended up with an article in Forbes that within a few hours got thousands of hits, all right? That's what it means to have a problem and a solution. This is your core promise. So you know how, so everybody just, uh, keep your mics off for a second. Just say, you know how, and let's just with your mics off, tell me like a problem your audience has. Okay. So it might be parents of kids. It might be, uh, I don't know who your audience is. Uh, it, it, the person on the plane that I pitched to, um, she worked uh, for the army. No, she worked for the Navy. And uh, you know how people who are in the Navy have this problem. So everybody ready? One, two, three. You know how, just try and say, what are the problems that people have? Just say a couple or write them down someplace, not in the chat yet, because uh, we're gonna do that later. Well, I show how to and give the results. This is your core promise. Oh, here's the article why you should fire 90% of your clients during COVID-19, right? Okay, what problems do you solve? Don't use these words. You know how, it's always you, we, us. As I said, nobody cares about you. So when I pitch this, do people say to you, you're so funny, you should be a comedian, but you don't know how? This tells you that I have great empathy with people who are funny and yet don't know how to have a career in comedy. They don't know, you know, everybody says like, oh, I'm funny at parties, but how do I turn that into an act? You see, your first step, people, is something desperately missing in this world, empathy. You have to know inside, psychologically, who are the buyers of what you are hustling. And then my book will show you how to make your sense of humor pay off. This led me to a huge career. It's that simple. And the other results I gave, I put on the cover of that book. That book was written in 1989 and it's still selling. It's still on the shelves of bookstores, I would assume if I ever went into a bookstore. You know how and I show your core promise. So let's practice with this. It's so much easier do doing it for somebody else than for yourself. But let's just say you're a professional organizer. 
this is you. Blonde and thin and organizing things. Okay, so you're organizing stuff. And obviously, this is the problem. So this is what I'd like you to do. Can you write into the chat? What are the problems that an, if you were an organizer and you're writing pitch, you know how people have, tell me right in the chat, and I just want to see it. What are some of the problems that a professional organizer would have? Just that she solves. Go ahead. Write it in the chat. And let me see what you um, come up with. All right. Oh, have you know how people spend hours looking for their keys? Oh, uh, Cassie, that's really good. Uh, you know how people are hoarders. Okay. Well, some people are. So you got to be careful. You know how all people are hoarders? No, no, not that many people are hoarders. So again, you have to like make sure you know your audience. You know you can never find room for old Tupperware or the new containers you have. You know how many of you live in an unhealthy environment. Um, you know, Helene, very nice. Uh, Dia, do you know how people have just too much stuff? Okay, but that's not a problem, is it? People have too much stuff. I have a lot of stuff. Isn't it great? I can afford to buy a lot of stuff. Why is it a problem? So it becomes a problem because the consequences. So if we have a problem, now listen to this. You really have to understand what a problem is. You can't find your keys. What are the consequences of not, let's just start with that. What are the consequences of not being able to find your keys? What are the consequences of it? You're late for work. Mm -hmm. Not getting work from time. Okay, what are the consequences not getting to work on time? You keep going, people. Keep going. You lose your job. You could get fired. It shows that, you know, and you know what? You're disorganized in your home shows up in your work and your boss is seeing it and you wonder why you're not getting promoted. Do you see how I'm escalating the problem? I'm escalating by going, what are the consequences? What And what's another consequence? And what's another consequence? You know, investing it paralyzes your creativity. Um, Patricia, that's really good. And that shows you where I'm going next. Um, we do this for a specific audience and that's the way we are successful. All advertising is niche advertising now. We can no longer go, my book is for people. My speech is for everyone. That's not how we do it. Um, you've got to decide on an audience and the audience is usually people you're related to or something you have an into or your current job. So I want to go back to this organizing thing and, and, I, and I think this will help you understand it. Okay. Let's just say, remember I said, I want to show you how you're in a networking meeting. Um, I go to a lot of meetups. I like, um, I'm writing a memoir now, so I thought I'd use this. So you're in a meetup for memoir writers and you're an organizer, okay? You are a professional organizer and you want to turn, when you go around and you do like, what do you do? You are an organizer. So what I'd like you to write in the chat now, what are the consequences of clutter for memoir writers? So uh, do you see this first three words here? You know how writers have this problem. That's how you start when you go around in your networking. You don't go first, you listen to the people and who's there, and then you adapt your pitch so you can get business by finding a problem that the people in front of you have. You guys get this? Just nod your head, because I'm just like, I'm, you know, nod your head. I can't, I can see you. Yes, 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 good. 
Thank you. Um, um, you're in a meeting with memoir wires. Okay. So what are the consequences of clutter? You're an organizer. That's what you do for a living for memoir writers. So I'd like you to put it in the chat and then I'm going to look. Okay, uh, loss, irreplaceable, you know, irreplaceable pictures, all right. You know how when you are writing your memoir, you can't find the outtakes you made a month ago. I'm not sure if every, so you wanna get something that everybody nods their head. Yes, yes, that happened to me. So. I think some of these things are really good that you're writing, like you can't find irreplaceable pictures, but that's not gonna be the same for everybody. So you really want to find the pain point. This is what we call in selling your pain point, create pain. People don't go uh, to a dentist in, until they, uh, they're in pain. So you need to put, remind them that they are in pain and they're gonna be a failure unless they have your organizing service. So let's just see what you say. You can't find pictures, procrastinate, shelving ideas, losing fit, you, you give up. But what is that, why? That's true of writers, but where is the bridge we build? So let me show you how to do this. This is just a beautiful thing. I'm going to go to my favorite thing. You know what people do when they don't know how to do something? They go to Google. All right. I put in, what are the effects of clutter on writers? Clutter makes it difficult to focus on one task or object. According to researchers at Princeton University, Neuroscience Institute, your brain has a limited ability to process information. So a disorganized work environment pulls your attention in different directions away from your writing. So you might, your messy desk is hurting your writing career. Okay, problem, solution. So if I'm at a writer's group and here's massive psychological effects of clutter, I'm gonna do a little friggin' research because this is how I pitch. So, okay, how did I go to like just a meetup um, for entrepreneurs? It was um, uh, women in business and we all went around and we said, what do we do? I wait till the end or the middle. I listen to people. And I ended up with over $8,000 worth of uh, coaching work from the way I pitched myself because they were all women in business. So I start off, you know how you have a great service but nobody knows about it and you can't afford advertising <clears throat> and you really wanna put yourself on the map as an expert. And maybe, you know, here's another thing you could try, like a problem. And you've hired web designers. You hired someone to do SEO. And you might as well have been taking your money and throwing out of your front door because it didn't change anything. Well, I show people how to get TED Talks. Thank you. Bye. And <laughs> my last client got over nine million hits on her TED Talk. Okay, so I show how to pitch, get, and write a TED Talk. Now, you know what? I really don't do that as a full-time job. It's maybe 5% of what I do, but I'm listening to what people's problems are with great empathy, and I, and I talk to their pain. So um, what I'd like to do is maybe just show um, one or two of these pitches that I've written and um, just the problem part. It's a lot of you are into comedy. Let me just, uh, I did a consult with Todd and, and this is a pitch that he wants to do to corporations um, um, when the quarantine's over. Your workers are coming back to work but they are not going to be the same. Whether we lost someone or our mind in the quarantine, we're going to be bringing back all 
bringing all of that back to the workplace. Companies are going to find that they're they're worst out is making more mistakes. They're having trouble focusing, having outbursts and conflict within your team is just the new normal. On top of that, our country is a huge cultural divide with neither side understanding each other. No wonder teams like cohesiveness, you know, no wonder teams, no wonder cohesive communications down and your workplace isn't fun. So why not give your staff a gift, a gift of humor and inspiration? Okay, and this goes into the five points and this he's a professional, he's a professional comic. I'll give you another one from a healthcare professional. Um, you know how some of our brightest thinkers, most creative problem solvers are being discarded by our school systems because they're not fitting in narrow mode because they are dyslexic. So she's really talking about children. She, um, she has a way to deal with the dyslexia. Very often these students have negative school reports are punished by their parents and act them in the classroom by anger tantrums, fighting, and even more often become invisible. Already overextended teachers get discouraged by trying to teach someone who's not paying attention, not listening to them, and not following directions. Parents can feel hopeless having tried therapy, tutoring, punishment, no results. I can help. I'm Sally Hal, and I'm committed to helping these dyslexic students by showing parents how to structure their learning and their environment. So it's very powerful when you get this. You know how you state the problem your audience has without using the word I, me, or my, and the results that you give. And that's all we're doing. So let's have some sharing. So um, I'd like you to share within the formula, you know how, what is the problem and the results that you give. And then I can give you some feedback and this is where it gets fun. And then I wanna give you some more specifics on the, this is the core promise that we're working on. And then I wanna give you some more specifics about the message of your formula and how, <laughs> A woman asked me on the plane and ended up $160,000. I want to tell you exactly how that happened. So it can happen to you because that's what I'm all about. Chris? Uh, you, know, um, you know how you may have lost touch with your inner child as an adult. I can bring, um, I can bring that sense of childlike wonder and awe through uh, performing magic. Well, who's your audience? Who, who's your audience? Well, Usually it's, it used to be a lot of TV, but now it's gonna be a Zoom show specifically. Okay, but who is your audience? Uh, it's gonna be half will be corporate clients and the other half- Okay, will... corporate clients, people in cubicles or people doing Zoom meetings or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, change it around, make it about the pandemic. Start again. You know, because of this pandemic, go ahead. How many of you feel? How many of you feel that you've lost uh, that don't sense. Go to a, see, I, I, I don't feel the results. I'm going to give a magic show. I feel it's a little narcissistic. Like right. I'm going to entertain you. So you're kind of like giving a message when you're really an entertainer. Being mm -hmm. an entertainer is fine, but it's very different than getting high-priced <laughs> corporate gigs. What am I going to get? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a hint, OK? Mm -hmm. The people who make, and this is for all of you, the people who make the most money at the corporate gig are people who uh, help people improve their money, okay? Imp improve their money. And then there's the people who um, health, health, wealth, and relationships. Those are the problems that you need to address. So nobody goes, oh, I don't have an inner child. So let's get right. a little here. So <laughs> You know how everybody feels so stifled, energy sucked out of you. We can't see people. We can't hug people. Okay. And even when we get the vaccine and even when this is end, there's going to be residual results. Right. And yet when you have a corporate job, they say, think out of the box. Let's be creative. Let's find creative solutions. And you know what? Management might find that people are drained and burnt out. Well, I show the magic of ideation. 
So you need to get a topic that's popular in corporate. Ideation is something where they have sessions where um, you know you wake up to the wonder. Now you could do it with magic, but I highly doubt um, you can say, I'm gonna show you magic tricks and you're going to feel like more connected. But I do think, I'm mean, as a former magician myself, I bring magic into maybe doing a, a Gene Anderson's cut and restore newspaper yeah. and, and give a metaphor of how do we, we restore ourselves. So we can use it as magic as a metaphor, but, but I just think, that in order to do this, what you're trying to do and a lot of us try to do is, I wanna go in this new area, but I want, don't wanna do anything different. I kinda of wanna mask it, what I do. I think, why don't you open yourself up to the possibility of doing mm -hmm. something totally different? How exciting would that be? Absolutely. You know, because here's what you need to know to be successful in ideation. The same things magicians know, misdirection, creating an illusion, um, making things vanish. So you could take the, the secrets of magic and apply them to corporate. That's really an idea worth gold. I would, I would yeah. use that. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm gonna do some more coaching. But first, I really wanna tell you about my um, free giveaway. Okay, so here it is. I told you I had some special gifts. Well, Aza, thank you for watching this webinar. I wanna give you a full year access to the message of you university, self-guided videos to find your message. But that's not all. I'm also going to give you the message of you formula. This is a fillable PDF that'll guide you to find your message. And that'll help you get a TED talk or sell yourself as a speaker or turn into a webinar. Talking about selling yourself as a speaker, I'm also going to give you a list of speaker bureaus. This is a list of agents who book speakers complete with their name, their phone numbers, website, where they are and notes about them. But before you contact a speaker bureau, you might want to have your pitch totally worked out because a speaker agent, also called bureaus, will see you once. You might get lucky, you'll have one opportunity and I don't want you to blow it because it's next to impossible to get your pitch, to realize it and to write it and to do it all by yourself. And that's why I want to offer you deep dive coaching. Let me write your pitch for you because I know what you do. People go and they attend my university and they go, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Yeah, I'm gonna watch these videos. Sure, and it's gonna, later. How much have you procrastinated that someday you're gonna write that book, someday you're gonna get that speaking career. Um, and some of you, you do it where it's all about you. When you really have to use your pitch to connect to another person. And just remember, what Whatever project you're working on, unless you have that solid foundation, your message that's a professional message, whatever you build on top of it will crumble. And you can't figure it out alone. And that's why I work with people. I coach people. This is Dr. Jeffrey Ritiker. And he had to do a TEDx talk. Well, after really working on it, we developed a book pitch based on his TEDx talk. And now look at it, he got a six figure book deal. This is what happens when you have a compelling pitch. Let's look at Dahlia Mogahed. Oh my God, I met Dahlia. She was, she's a Muslim analyst. Um, she worked for the Obama administration and she, had a tendency not to use stories, but to use facts and figures. Well, we found this absolutely compelling story that led to her getting a TED talk that was voted the best TED talk of 2019. I wrote it for her and look at that. She has almost 7 million views. Not only that, but we added a lot of humor to it and she ended up on the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. And because that's what happens 
when you really have a compelling pitch that inspires people. And here's somebody else, Bailey Hurd. Unlike Dahlia, who just had a lot of facts and figures, Bailey had a lot of stories and she had a very compelling story about her husband who had tragedy in his life. He had an early death and she was speaking at churches. Everybody loved her, but she wasn't getting paid. Once we turned her stories into a pitch, a message, she started to get $5,000 per speech. So why don't you join me? Let me write your pitch for you. It's a one minute pitch that can be a real career game changer. So remember, you're going to get Access University. Um, and if you sign up for the deep dive coaching package where I will personally coach you, I am going to mail you a signed hard copy of my book, The Message of You. Um, I'm also going to give you an in-depth review and feedback on the message of you formula. This is going to be three email exchanges. I am going to really to get to know you, what you've done, your history, to figure out exactly what your pitch is. And after we do this email communication where I evaluate your message, I expand on it, we're going to go back and forth. Then we're gonna to get together and you're going to have a one hour deep dive coaching with me where you will leave this with your pitch already written by me. So you might ask, you know, well, how much would this cost? Because it seems like a lot. I am really going to get to know you and you're gonna walk away not only knowing your message, but with a written ver version of it. And you can use this as your script for your sizzle reel. So how much does this cost? Well, let me give you an idea of what I charge. The cost of coaching for speech writing is 7,500. Okay, now don't get scared here. Um, the cost for me to write your 20 minute TED speech is $5,000. So what is the cost for me to do this deep dive coaching package? The complete package is $397. This is going to be a limited time only. And I only take three of these per week. So if you're interested, click on that button below. And what you're going to get is a signed hard copy of the message of your book. You're going to get a professional in-depth review and feedback on the message of you exploratory formula. We're gonna have email combination uh, communications back and forth to evaluate your message. I'm going to be asking you very specific questions and certain things we're going to expand upon. I'm gonna to get to know you because I'm preparing for my one hour face-to-face -face coaching where I will write your unique message of you pitch. You're going to walk away with that pitch. So click on the button below. Let me help you find your message and launch your book, your career, your TED Talk, and also give you all that free stuff. Click on the button below. Audrey Levy, do you want to uh, give, give it a go? You know how everybody wishes that they had a guardian angel, especially now with COVID. In the Adventures of the Angel Olio, a book series that I've written, I bring everyone their own guardian angel. Okay, let me, is... let me ask you something. Um, how many of you have in the past week have said, I wish I had a guardian angel? How many of you? I want you to just... You can raise your real hands. Um, I wish I had a guardian angel. Raise your hand. Nobody. Okay, that gives you your answer. We have to go back to the drawing board, my friend. Okay, we have to go back to the drawing board. I need to go and have my lead in like Judy had. You know, how many, how often do people say you're funny? You know, you're so funny, you should be a comedian and you don't know how. 
in a room of open my comics, every single person would raise their hand. So you need something that everybody will raise their hand. You can't make it up. It's about empathy. I really know how you feel. Okay, so we need to go back to the drawing board on that to come up with what is a problem. And it's not a problem that you wish. I wish, I wish I was in love. I wish I was, that. that's not a problem. A problem, something becomes a problem because of the consequences of it and how it affects your work or, you know, your life or your relationships, or your health. Okay. So uh, what about rephrasing in terms of your health? That might, that might help. Okay, so you know how um, most families have at least one member that has a mental illness? That's every family. Oh, oh mental illness. So now your audience are people who have, um, uh, people who have mental illness. Okay, how many of you, let's do, let's do another view here. How many of you have people who have mental illness in your family? Raise your hand. Yes, okay. Audrey, I love your adjustment on this, my friend. Really well done. What's the problem, and what, what are you going, um, what's, what is the problem of having someone with mental illness? Oh, well. <laughs> that you saw okay. how many of you have a problem you know have family mental illness what is the problem of that are you having a hard time connecting do you feel guilty that you haven't done enough see i really need you to do and all we have to do is google you know people this is so easy to do all you have to do is google your audience and the problem because google is brilliant because what it does is it tells you what people are searching for. What do people do when they have a problem? Hey, Google, how do I floss? You know, right? People look that up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Google is answering me right now. That is so crazy. Hey, Google, shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? All right. Um, let me take um, Donna, Donna Sanchez. You know how you have that one coworker that just gets under your skin? I show people how to make peace with that coworker so that their annoying habits don't have to run your day. That is fantastic. So that's your pitch to corporate. Don't have to ruin your day. You can get the project, how to get the project done on time with your sanity intact, right? And end up actually going out and having a beer with them. I mean, how to diffuse conflict. My God, that's fantastic, Donna. It's a pleasure to hear it. Now, how would you change it if it's not corporate? It could really be for anybody because, do you know Nate, that- Give me something, give me something. Do you know, do you know how annoying your family, I mean, you pick a family member, like- A family member, you know, like, have like, a family, you know how a neighbor? You know how you know how your neighbor drives you crazy and <laughs> does all this stupid stuff. I show you I show you how to make peace with that pesky neighbor or your annoying mother or your yeah. Nosy, you know what's really good sister or whatever, so that their annoying habits don't have to run your day. Like ah, uh, give me five tips. I'm gonna give you five tips, surefire tips on how to diffuse that kind of. A number's always good. Uh, really, really, really good. Thank you for watching my webinar.